Oh, you mean the fact that smart people are investing their time and money to make more money? <laughs> it's, I, that's been happening forever. Uh, that's uh, like asking, uh, if, when you learned about railroads, why are people trying to build railroads? Uh, they're doing it because it's the uh, future. It gives us a positive vision of the future. It's not a real surprise that a number of self-made billionaires are now trying to build spaceships. I think that they're very uh, perceptive and they're not going to lose money on it. The key issue of, of getting humanity into the solar system is that private individuals really have to, to be a key player. And, and this has been one of NASA's uh, themes here uh, in the vision for space exploration. Really part of it is enabling the private sector to get us into space. And that's the essence of the new space movement. Uh, we are really on our way uh, with, with people flying into space, people going to places in the solar system, funded completely by the private sector. And, and in some sense, as a, as a NASA employee, uh, uh, we're back to our roots. Our roots is to, to help midwife a new industry. So it's quite exciting. Well, we've just founded this, this very last week, literally, the International Institute of Space Commerce which is going to be the International Space University's, ISU's, Institute of Space Commerce. Uh, founded on the Isle of Man by the kind generosity of the Manx government and the Manx people, but also a display and a symbol and a commitment from them to the future. They're on the Isle of Man. We're only 80,000 people, 80,000 wonderful people. But we can't have NASA's and we can't build space shuttles. But we do have one of the best financial centers in the world one of the best banking industries in the world, the best accounting industries. We have all this commercial knowledge that can be applied to space. And this last year as well, we're 1,028 years old, the oldest continuous parliament in the world. And so we're really looking at the future. You don't get to be 1,028 years old without looking to the future. And our way of solving the problems of tomorrow is to have this institute, is to support the institute. There's an institute of space law, there's an institute of space policy, grew out of the government programs. Now here we are in space, business booming in the satcoms, starting in venture space. And people need to sit down and think about the problems of economics, markets, commerce, and regulation facing the commercial aspect of the industry. That's what the Institute's set to do. And we hope that will last, again, equally more than Sputnik and be an integral part of ISU and we'll be going a long, long way into the future. I think now we're in that kind of exciting era at the, at the beginning of almost new no, any new notion where, where very frequently we talk about new space as if it's going to replace old space. What I'm really hoping, as I hope in all intergenerational situations, that new space will learn from old space, build upon old space, that it will recognize there were giants in old space and that they can stand on their shoulders. Uh, I also hope that old space recognizes that it shouldn't be standing on the shoulders of new entrepreneurial ideas so that they can't grow. What I want is a world in which we understand that we have a tremendous debt to old space. Uh, from uh, the very old space of Tsiolkovsky telling us that we had a cosmic future to the old space of governmental massive programs with heavy launch vehicles where cost was less of an object than it is today uh, to the more modern world in which um, there is a real possibility if we manage it correctly uh, that new space and its commercial and entrepreneurial energy can actually work cooperatively with public space, which may be the way old space transforms into something new. Uh, I think we are now in the real exploration of space. I think at the beginning we had governments uh, jumping into it and wanting to go there, some for political reasons, some for science reasons, but now we have the actual public leading the way and doing the most exciting things. Um, you know, Bert Rattan's ship, uh, Spaceship One, and his new one, Spaceship Two, are an example of, of how the world is really available, and anybody can go into space. I think we are really on the cusp of something big, um, uh, and uh, uh, as it were, moving out in space and colonizing space in due course. Uh, it'll take many, many years, but. Uh, 
we're here to to do it as a human race. So uh, that is that is great. That is uh, wonderful. It'll be a unifying force, I'm, I think, for all of us. This common vision of doing something for mankind, for humanity, and to explore our universe, uh, and uh, hopefully, um, in that way, bring us together and uh, set aside all our prejudices, our differences, and and focus on the the thing that really matters most, our common survival and our common destiny.